In this video, I'm going to briefly discuss some of the general ideas about the language um, to use in results and discussion sections. I'm not going to be going into detail, giving you specific language for de describing certain trends in graphs or tables, because really there would be, um, when you're at kind of the MSc level, there would be such variation in what trends you were just trying to describe that it would be very hard to give um, that specific language, but I will be giving some more general advice. So first of all, a really simple one, but one that often, um, a little mistake that often comes up. If you use the word figure or table and add a number after it, it becomes like a name. So obviously if it's a name, it would have the capital letter. And if it isn't a name, you would use an article like um, the before it, as we can see in the examples here, as shown in figure one, figure has the capital F and as shown in the figure has the lowercase f and the article there. Next, let's have a look at some of the structures that you might use when you introduce your figure or table. So first of all, you might want to introduce the topic of your table or figure and say what it shows. There are two main structures you could do, use to do this. You could use it in the active form, figure one shows the impact of wind speed, or you could put it in a passive form, the impact of wind speed is shown in figure one. If you're wanting to give the finding rather than just stowing the topic, then we use slightly different structures. For example, you might say table two suggests that nearly all respondents were involved in the fish value chain. Or as suggested in table two, nearly all respondents were involved in the fish value chain. You might notice I've put that in brackets. Obviously, please don't put, when in your writing, please don't put that in brackets. The reason I put that in brackets is because you could either have it in the sentence or not have it in the sentence. Whereas with the, with the previous structure we looked at, when you want to give the topic, you wouldn't include that. You wouldn't include the word that. Okay, so those are those two different structures. So as you move on in discussing your results, you might want to get more into the analysis, into answering the questions of who, what, when, where, why, and requiring much deeper analysis. And the language here is extremely important. Sometimes people talk about using academic language, um, which is good, but sometimes that can lead to the idea that just adding in phrases like it seems that and it appears that to the front of any sentence will, will fix, the, fix the problem and make it academic. I actually really like um, the expression confidently uncertain that Skelton, who is quoted by Swells and Feek, uses. I really like this because I think it's got both that idea of the confidence and the uncertainty in there. If you're just trying to sound academic, it does it might not lead to the appropriate degree of certainty. If we imagine a scale where on one end you are absolutely 100% certain about something, and on the other end you have absolutely no idea, whatever your finding is will come somewhere on those on that scale. What you need to do is use the appropriate language to make it clear where on the scale you come. If you're always just using language, or it might be it seems that it's possible on certain occasions, the real weakening language that you think is sounding academic, it's okay if we really are uncertain, but if you're always that uncertain, then what really have we found out? It's quite unsatisfying to the reader. It feels like we really just don't know anything. Equally though, if you're overstating and overly claiming to know something, that you can't know to that degree, it makes your argument very weak. And someone could easily challenge it and say, actually, I found this one other occasion which didn't happen like that. And if you've not um, used the appropriate cautious language, your argument might completely fall flat. So let's have a look at some of the many different ways in which um, Twelves and Feek identify that we can make our language more cautious. You might use some of these, you might use more than one of these um, in, uh, on any particular occasion. So first of all, you can use a modal auxiliary um, verb, like will, may, might, or could. 
obviously noting the difference in meaning that they carry will versus may for example for and my very different meanings of a phrase like it is certain that it is probable that possible that unlikely that probable is an is an example where you can see you're being really really certain you're actually making a a very kind of uh, confident claim but you've still actually weakened it a little bit so weakening doesn't mean that you have to be going to the all possible it can be actually quite strong but it's just taking it away from that 100 percent certainty you can use distant in sing language like seems or appears you can use tend to make to make it clear you're generalizing and that it won't be won't necessarily be the case in every occasion you could qualify the subject many x a majority of something some something again it makes it clear that you're not talking about every single occasion you could limit the data so i i was studying a junction this specific junction at this specific time that means if you study the traffic flow at a different junction at a different time it 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 is okay that we could have come up with two different results. Whereas if I just made a conclusion that this will always be the traffic flow, um, if then if you find different results, that kind of really um, defeats my claims. You could add in exceptions or you could use weaker verbs like suggest instead of show. Sometimes students get to the discussion writing phase and then and the results phase and then get quite stuck that they feel they just don't have the language to describe with enough detail um, the trends that they're seeing and this can be quite a problem because there isn't at this level there isn't really a book that you can go to that will give you all of the answers of this is how to describe whatever results you happen to have in front of you so i would argue that um it's a really good idea to start developing your vocabulary um, as early on as possible, but it's never too late. Um, so what I mean by this is look at a research paper from your field. What verbs do they use to introduce their research? So often we might use show, so table one shows. Do they use any other verbs? Which verbs they use the most? Look at what words they use to describe the trends and the results. Do you know what those words mean? Can you look up similar words? And what words and phrases do they use to make their claims defendable? Which Can you see different statements implying um, ideas at different points on that scale of certainty? So just very briefly, we have just looked at some of the basic language things to be thinking about in your results and discussions. Um, just a reminder that if you have the word table and figure and a number, then it has become a name and should be treated like that in terms of capitalization. You need to be careful to choose language with the appropriate degree of certainty. And I'd really advise that you start developing your vocabulary um, as soon as possible. I mentioned a couple of times the book um, Swales and Feek. Um, I'd recommend looking in this for more information kind of about the language um, considerations in their chapter on data commentary.